Have you ever wanted to start an Amazon business with £1,000 or less? Well, in this video, I give you my seven steps to actually achieve this goal based on my years of Amazon experience. And you won't believe what step number five is. So as long as you follow these steps that I give out in this video, then you can turn £1,000 into £5,000 and actually grow an Amazon business into a sort of a money making machine. Um, and I, I truly do believe this, that this, these are the best steps that I can give to anyone to achieve this goal. And, you know, if you want to do this and actually create your own Amazon business, then there is no better video. My name is Simon and I'm a six figure Amazon seller. I've been selling on Amazon now for two years and I'm projected to make £100,000 or more this year. As of today, which is uh, the 29th of March, um, since the 1st of January, I have made £25,000 profit, which you know puts me on target for that £100,000. So using my experience, I've come up with a sort of step-by-step -step process to help people who have a limited budget actually get started and succeed on Amazon. And I've coached several students with limited budgets and helped them grow their businesses. Now, before we get started, I just want to mention this video sponsor, which is Bybot Pro. Bybot Pro is pretty much the best tool you can get when it comes to analyzing deals on Amazon. And it's really important to do the research before you buy a product to make sure that it's profitable and you're able to sell it and many other factors. And Bybot Pro has all these features built in very nicely and makes it really clear whether a deal is a good deal or not. So the key to growing your Amazon business from a starting capital of £1,000 and getting it to £5,000 in that sort of six month period is to be able to buy and sell your stock as quickly as possible. And there are multiple ways you can do this. So the biggest mistake I see my students take on is they have the wrong business strategy in mind when they begin their Amazon business. And it's not entirely their fault. They are watching other YouTubers out there who have large Amazon businesses and talk to other Amazon sellers who also have a larger Amazon businesses. And their strategy is going to be totally different to what someone who's starting with a limited budget is. So you have to do a different strategy at the beginning and once you get to that sort of £5,000 sort of capital level, then you can change strategies to the more sort of traditional route and follow on on kind of what all the other sellers do. So as our goal is to grow as fast as possible, we're actually not going to do FBA or fulfillment by Amazon at the beginning. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with FBM, which is fulfilled by merchant. And here are the exact reasons why. So what we have here is a typical timeline for doing Amazon FBA. And what you can see here is that we have the ordering process. This might be ordering from a website, which is traditional. You know, it might take an average of three days to arrive. Then you have the shipping, you know, which, you know, takes a couple of days as well. And this, when I mean shipping here, I mean shipping from yourself um, to a, um, you know, the Amazon warehouse. Then it takes about three days to check in on average. So that means it's arrived at the Amazon warehouse and it takes them, you know, two, three days, sometimes more to actually open that box and put it on the shelf. Then, you know, in an ideal situation, you sell the item in one day and then it takes 14 days for Amazon to pay out. So what we're looking at from here is from the point of you ordering to the, the day that your, the money comes back into your bank account is 23 days. Now, if we look here at a traditional FBM timeline, what we can see here is that we have um, the same sort of thing where we have to order it, you know, from a, an online retailer three days again. Then we have a uh, we, we've basically skipped those steps of sending it to the Amazon warehouse and we skipped the steps of the check in. So we've saved ourselves around five days and you can see here we've gone from ordering to selling and then we ship it. You know, as an FBM, that's what you're doing as a fulfilled by merchant. Merchant, you are sending the item to the end customer, um, and then you get your payout after 14 days, and it's back in your bank account. So the total time for this sort of uh, overall transaction is, you know, around 18 days or so. So we've saved ourselves five days here, and this is really important to help churn your stock quickly. Um, that is our goal right now is to churn our stock as fast as possible so that we can get that money back and get it reinvested into something else. And, you know, if we do this over an entire six month period, you know, that's six, six times five is 30 days we'll be saving. So we're almost going to be saving an extra month. We'll be a month ahead 
versus doing FBA. Step two, did you know there's another way to be able to buy and sell your stock and grow your business much faster? So I have a good friend of mine who started his Amazon business one and a half years ago with only £5,000. And in those one and a half years, using the next strategies, he's been able to turn his £5,000 into a six-figure Amazon business. And now he makes a full-time living by doing Amazon. So along with doing the FBM model versus the FBA model, what we're also going to do is we're going to be doing retail arbitrage versus online arbitrage. And I think retail arbitrage is going to be a much better way to get your stock quickly and send it quickly and churn your stock. So when you're starting out, I recommend you avoid doing online arbitrage and stick to doing retail arbitrage. And here's the reason why. You can see here I've highlighted in red, we've got this order of one day. Now, if we totally eliminate the um, the ordering from a website where it, you, know, you have to order and it arrives in, say, three days, we can totally eliminate that step um, and we can save an extra sort of three days on um, the pro entire process of churning stock. And what retail arbitrage is, is where you're actually going into a physical store, you're scanning items on the shelf using an app like uh, Buybot Go. And what you're doing there is basically just checking and seeing if it's profitable and then you're buying it immediately. And then, you know, you can list that item on Amazon immediately while you're in the store using the Amazon app or wait till you get home. And then in theory, you know, in, in an ideal situation, before you've even gone to the checkout inside of the actual store, you could have sold it on Amazon if it's a fast selling product. So you're able to save an extra three days here. And you can see here the total sort of time now as a as a uh, an ideal sort of scenario is 16 days from buying the item to actually having that money back in the bank account. So you've saved a total of seven days for every single time you do this. So as you can see, if you extrapolate this over six months, it's gonna save you a huge amount of time. And, and this is a really important step that also helps you churn your stock faster, get your money back faster, and be able to reinvest quickly so you can scale your business. Step three. Now there are two tools out there that no Amazon business can do without, and these are the two tools that I recommend you buy. So the first of these tools that I've mentioned before is Buybot Pro, and you just absolutely need this to be able to analyze deals. Without this, you just don't really stand a chance of uh, actually achieving your goals in Amazon. So not only does it show you how profitable an item is, you can also use the sort of keeper charts that are built into the Buybot Pro. And you can basically look at the price history of a product, understand how that product has reacted to certain times of the year or how many, if a lot of sellers have jumped on that listing or whatever it is basically, and just fully understand how that listing reacts over time. And that's a really important thing to look at the historical charts of a product. So Buybot Pro has this built in and it has a bunch of other features as well, like looking at the average price over time, the number of sellers, is it a hazmat item, is it a uh, an oversize item, all these very important things that are going to be gotchas when you're a new uh, seller. So it's really important to use this. And the next thing I recommend is joining a Discord group. And because I am recommending that you do retail arbitrage over online arbitrage, I recommend you join a group called Mental Picks. There basically isn't a better retail arbitrage group in the United Kingdom that I'm aware of. And I'm in Mental Picks and I've made thousands of pounds, you know, in the six months that I've been a member there. And I thoroughly recommend it. So if you want the best chance to have a go at building your £1,000 into £5,000 and actually build an Amazon business, then I recommend you actually sign up to both of these uh, tools, or one tool and one Discord group. And you'll find the links are in the description, um, but I genuinely do believe that these are two of the best uh, things that are going to help you grow your business. So if you want to sign up to any of these, uh, please look in the description. You'll find the links there. Step four. Now we've all heard of the story of the tortoise and the hare. And obviously in that story, we learn that even though the hare is the fastest, actually in the long run, the tortoise is the one that wins. However, in this step, I'm actually going to give you some unusual advice. So my unusual advice for you actually is to take on the strategy of the hare to begin with. Now, as an overall business model over a long period, you're definitely better off taking the long term um, slow and steady approach. However, since we're trying to build our capital really quickly, I actually think we need to aim for the strategy of the hare just initially and then transition into the tortoise. 
The name of the game is building and scaling your capital as fast as possible. And this means we really need to be going for the really fast moving products. We don't wanna be buying products that we're, that we're gonna be sitting on for six months or 12 months. We wanna be buying products that we can sell within one or two months at most and get that money back so that we can reinvest it. This is why I recommend sticking to products that are gonna sell within about 30 days or less. This way we can get our money back and churn that money into more stock and just keep repeating. And if you wanna do this sort of, you know, do this inside of six months, then this is really critical. If you wanna be a bit more patient, then fine, you can go for those slightly slower moving products. But in the, the name of the game here is churning. Churn and burn, basically, um, is the most important strategy for this. Step five. So we talked about in the previous step about growing our capital really quickly with fast movers. Well, in this step, we're gonna be using another strategy that's also gonna help us grow our capital really fast. So most Amazon gurus out there basically say you should be looking for a 30% ROI on your items. And this might be good advice for someone who has a large amount of capital to do, you know, to put into their Amazon business, but it's not a good strategy for someone who has limited capital. If we want to have any chance of achieving our goal, we really need to, and I, I apologize for repeating this, we need to be churning and burning our products as quickly as possible and getting that money back. And we also need to be uh, looking to get those higher ROIs. So in this step, I recommend that you go for no less than 80% ROI. And since we're doing retail arbitrage, this should be really achievable. When people say go for 30% ROI, they tend to talk about online arbitrage, which is an entirely different business model to what we're doing when we're building our, our initial Amazon business. So you've just got to be uh, strict with yourself when you go out into the stores. You've got to be looking at the 80% ROI items. And, you know, the, you've got some flexibility here. If you find a really good item that's going to sell really quickly, you can maybe take a slightly less ROI. But in general, you want to be passing up on those lower ROI items and sticking to the 80% or more. And you'll be surprised at how high the ROIs can be in retail arbitrage. They can be hundreds or two hundreds or even thousands of percent. Step six, you need to treat your Amazon business like a baby, and that means not stifling its growth. Now, an Amazon business or any business, when it first starts out, is fairly fragile. And one very important thing is not to take away any resources from the growth of that business. This is why it's very important to not take any money out of your business when it's growing. Otherwise, you're really going to uh, stifle its growth and it's going to take you a lot longer to achieve your goals. But not only should you not be taking money out, you should actually be putting more money in. And this is a very normal thing for most Amazon sellers. They start out with, let's say, £1,000. And once they realize how good the business model is and how achievable and scalable this business model is, they're more willing to put more money in. So what I recommend you do is just try and put an extra £200 a month in or whatever you can afford and just put that back into the business because every pound you can put back in, hopefully if you can churn your stock every month, there's going to be an extra 80 pence or more, depending on what ROI you find, um, back into the business. And the sooner you can do this, the better it is for the growth of the business. So yeah, you really need to be keeping the money in there and ideally putting a bit more money in to achieving your goals. And just as an example here, if you were able to put an extra £200 in uh, over, let's say, five months, that gives you an extra £1,000 into your business as capital. And if you're able to spend that £1,000 in month six and you get an 80% ROI, then that's an extra £800 that you have made just from putting an extra £200 into the business. Step seven. Without this final step, then all the previous steps will be a total waste of time. So make sure you pay attention to this final step and it is the key to bringing together all of the previous steps. Just like with anything worth doing in life, it takes a lot of hard work and effort. And if you're gonna start your own business, whether it's an Amazon business or any other kind of business, you're gonna to have to put in a lot of hard work, a lot of hours to get it off the ground and get it to the point where it actually makes you some decent money. This is why it's very important to work hard and trust the process and the steps that I've laid out for you. You're gonna to need to have grit and you're gonna to need to have to have the ability to overcome any problems that might come your way and realize that by overcoming problems, you're gonna actually grow as an individual and you know make your business and yourself much stronger.
And one thing I've never said during this entire video is that this process will be easy. In fact, I actually think starting Amazon with a thousand pound or less is probably one of the hardest ways you can do it. However, I still think that you can do it with uh, only a thousand pound or less, you know, and some people do not have the option, but to start with that thousand pounds, they do not have the resources. So if that's all you've got, then that's all you've got and you just have to make do. So with these steps, it's going to give you the best chance to achieve your goals of starting an Amazon business. So with my steps and your hard work, anything's possible.